Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing amazing today. So first things first, I'm just gonna say today is one of those days where everything is going wrong. So within this video, I do mess up a lot. Usually these videos take me like an hour. This took me four hours to film. So in this week's video, I kind of thought I would do another full face of one brand video, just like my elf video, which I will also link below for you because it was the first one I did. And this week I'm gonna be doing it on the brand NUA. So I've tried to make like an autumn vibe again with this full face of one brand makeup. And if you wanna see how I achieve this look, then keep watching. And if not, then bye-bye. <laughs> I'm so spotty recently. Like, look at all of that. That is disgusting. MUA is cruelty-free. However, it's not suitable for vegetarians and vegans because some of the ingredients in the products are derived from animal sources. Sad. MUA is a drugstore brand, which is super affordable. Like, there's me forking out, like, £42 on an eyeshadow palette when I've just got a full face of makeup for everything for, like, just under or just over 30 quid. That is insanely good. MUA stands for Makeup Academy and is a brand that is exclusive to super drug stores and it has its own website called the MUA store, which I will link below for you. MUA does not sell in China and it does not have a parent company, but it does kind of have a parent owner, but it's not, I don't really know how to explain it, but they're owned by the FB Beauty Company and it's kind of like, it's like a warehouse or cooperation in London, but it's, it's stocks of a brand, and I'm just like really confused because I was trying to Google it for ages and I don't really understand what it is. I'm pretty sure MUA doesn't have a parent company. I'm not even gonna lie, like for some reason I literally just can't talk today. Like I've done my intro like 10 hundred times and it sucks. I keep summoning over my own words today and I'm actually getting a little bit annoyed at myself because for some reason I am feeling very awkward on camera today and I never usually feel awkward doing this. So I'm just gonna get on and do my makeup. So before I do my foundation and colour correction, I'm, ooh, almost dropped it, surprise, surprise. So before I do my colour correction and foundation, I'm gonna go in with the MUA Pro Base Moisturising Primer with Vitamin A and E and Tea Tree Oil. There's so many brands that put like Vitamin A, B, C, D, E, F, all the alphabet on it. But I never actually understand what these vitamins are, so I googled it. And Vitamin E is meant to kind of promote healthy skin, which makes sense to why it's in a primer. However, Vitamin A is a fat soluble. I'm just gonna take the plastic wrap off it first. Oh, stuck to me. So this is what the product looks like. I promise you the packaging is not that white. It's kind of like a pearly packaging. I don't know if it's air, but it's so like tight, like you can barely squish it. I don't know if there's gonna be like a lot of product in it or it's gonna be mainly air. If I just take the lid off, it's got, oh, got a little nozzle. That's cute. So let's see what the, oh. Every other primer I've got that's been in a bottle like this has kind of been that silicon texture. This is kind of like a moisturiser texture, like it's quite thick, it's not runny, because it's not obviously running down my finger. But I did imagine it to be silicone, just because of the bottles and the ones I've had in the past. So obviously I did my last video on the Makeup Revolution Soft Palette, so I'm going to be using the mirror again from that because it was just so good. It's thinner than a moisturiser. It doesn't feel oily, but it just feels very wet, like it's going to take a while to dry. Oh, you can definitely smell the tea tree in that. This primer cost me £2, which I think is really, really, really good for 27 mil and it doesn't feel like it's going to be all air. I thought that before I used it and now I actually think it's going to be all product. It says on the back a velvety smooth primer but when I put it on my skin it was very like wet and runny. So it's been on for a couple of minutes now and it has left my skin feeling very very smooth although it did take like a couple of minutes to dry where I haven't really had that in a primer before. Usually it's like just put it on and then like instantly I can just carry on the rest of my makeup like I haven't had to wait around so it probably wouldn't be very good if you're in a rush. As far as I can see it hasn't massively reduced my pores. Right, so now I'm gonna go in with colour correction. These are the colour corrections I got from MUA, and if you go on the MUA website, there is so many different ranges of colour correction. The green is really difficult to see, so this is what they look like. This is what they look like inside the pots. I got green because it counteracts with any red areas on your skin, and then I got peach, and on the website, it says the peach is for making areas more radiant, whereas to me, Peach is making dark areas lighter. These colour corrections were £2 each, which I think is amazingly good. <laughs> I just dropped it and snapped the lid off it. I gotta stop dropping stuff in my videos, honestly. Oh, it's very, very, very creamy. I'm just gonna put it under my eyes where dark areas are. That hid my dark circles so well. Oh my God. It's that creamy that it's kind of started to melt on my brush. Right, let's try the green. And this is where I turn into Shrek. There we go, picked up pretty well. It spreads so easily, but it also covers such a good amount of area at the same time, but it's not like thinning, like it is covering my skin. This is why I buy primers with colour correction in them, because 
this happens. I'm just gonna blend it out on my finger because I don't want it to be absorbed by a sponge or a brush because then that defeats the whole point of colour correction. The only thing I can really fault with these colour corrections is they are very oily. They've left my skin really, really, really shiny, which is probably why they're so easy to blend. Other than that, it's given me very, very, very good cancellation of red areas and dark areas. So I am pretty happy with that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's foundation time. Let's see how well this works. I can't even find where I'm meant to open this. This is the MUA Skin Define Matte Perfect Foundation. This cost me four pound, which has 32 milliliters of product in it, which I think is actually really, really, really good. It has shine control, which is really good from a matte foundation, which is needed because although I do love these color corrections, they are very oily. I'm gonna take the lid off. Oh, it's a pump. It's, oh, it's so smooth. So that's the colour of the foundation, and I think that's pretty close to my skin tone, to be honest with you. Are you being serious? I just got it on my jumper. Ah, It's gone on quite dry, but I've used like three pumps now, and I just don't know how much coverage this is going to give me, because it doesn't seem to... Oh, actually. Oh, okay. This does actually cover quite a lot of area, and I've used three pumps, and it feels like the right amount to have used. I put the foundation on thinking it was going to be kind of the same shade as my skin, but I feel pretty orange at the moment. I'm really worried in case it oxidises, because then I'm going to be even more orange. It doesn't say on the product whether this is like medium coverage, full coverage, anything like that. So I'd say it's kind of given medium coverage, and it's hidden any imperfections quite well. This foundation is very warm undertoned, which is probably why it looks so orange. I just literally just keep staring at the mirror like, is it gonna oxidize? I'm gonna move on to my concealer now instead of worrying about my foundation. This is the Cover and Conceal Concealer Stick or Wand. I'm not really sure, I haven't opened it yet. It cost me £1.50 and I got the shade Natural. It's pretty basic in terms of packaging. It's nothing like amazingly special. It's a wand. I really do love wand concealers. I just think the application is so good and accurate. So that's the shade it comes out of, which I think is a really, really nice concealer shade. I am very, very happy with that. Oh, it's very creamy. Look how many imperfections there are on my face. <sighs> Mamma mia. Oh! Oh, that is a really nice finish. I actually really, really like this concealer. I think the coverage of this concealer is amazing. I'm impressed by this concealer. £1.50, that was. One pound bloody 50. Right, next I'm gonna set it in place with the MUA Pro Base Matte Satin Pressed Powder. This was two pound 50, which I think is really, really, really good for a pressed powder. And I got the shade Translucent because I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit scared what shade to get. I know Translucent basically means no color. So that's what I went for. The pan is absolutely huge. I'm never gonna run out of it. So I'm just gonna take it on a large powder brush and apply it to anywhere that I put my concealer to set it in place. There's like no fallout. Well, there's like a tiny bit. This went on so lightweight, like I've covered my whole face in it, especially like around my under eyes. And I just feel like I can't feel it at all. And it's definitely matte, like I don't really see any shine other than what my soft boxes are basically forcing on my skin. So now I'm gonna use the MUA Pixel Perfect Multi Bronzer. This is such a weird product because look at it. That's like loads of different shades of bronzers in one. Like there's like pinks, there's like purpley toned ones, there's dark browns, light browns, there's like yellow. In fact, it's got so many shades in it, it's meant to give you like a really unique glow. I got the shade Terracotta Glow and this cost me three pound. All right, there is no fallout at all. Oh, some of the bronzers I use now are really harsh in the fact of how they contour. So you do have to like keep blending it. Whereas this has just gone on straight away as really natural. Oh my God, that is so good. I think that is my base makeup done. So now I'm gonna move on to brows. So I was just gonna move on to my brows and as I was opening the product I was gonna use, it the lid hung off and the product fell out of it. The spoolie bit just fell out of my product and I haven't, I've only just opened it. That's not great, is it? So this is the product. <laughs> this is the three in one brow definer powder brow. It's from the Lux edition, which I think is like the premium kind of makeup, it's a bit more expensive. This cost me four pound. So let's take the ends off. So this is the spoolie end that fell on the floor, which is great. And then this is the brow end. Ooh, it's a weird shape. <gasps> okay. Oh my God. When I was writing my notes for this, I didn't know where the uh, third bit of this was and I've just discovered it. Spoolie end. Then we've got the brow bit on this side and it's a very odd shape. It's like a kind of triangle. If you twist the middle bit, there's this like powder brush thing. And I don't know how to use this. All right, let's tackle my brows. So I'm just gonna neaten my brow. So now I'm gonna go in with this weird triangle end thing into my brow.
So I've done my brows with a kind of weird angled end and I haven't used that weird powder brush bit. I got the shade dark brown because my eyebrows are normally dark, but someone did point out in one of my old videos that the reason my eyebrows look dark, they're not actually that dark, but the reason they look so dark is because my hair is blonde and my skin is really pale, so my eyebrows look darker. So I keep buying really dark products for my brows when they're actually not as dark as I think they are, but I'm really happy someone pointed that out. The spoonie end, even though it kind of like fell out the product instantly, was actually really good. Like it's not a flimsy brush, it's a really sturdy brush. It brushed like every single hair, so it is a really good spoonie brush. This angled end is really, really good as well for getting a really precise shape. Okay, so I've just gone over with this like weird powder end and I'm not really sure what it's meant to do. It's just kind of darkened them a bit. So let's move on to my eyes now. So I'm feeling kind of like autumn vibes and I brought the MUA Pro Eyeshadow Palette in All Natural. It cost me £5, you get £15 in it and they are a mix of shimmers and mattes. Even the matte ones are quite shimmery. This is what the palette looks like up close. We do have some warmer tones in the palette and then we do have some cooler tones in the palette as well. Really nice variety in there. I haven't used this palette before, I don't know how pigmented the shades are going to be so I'm just going to swatch a couple on my arm quickly. So like, da -da. No. Even the matte ones are really pigmented. Too obsessed. I'm excited to do this. Oh my god. I'm going to use this shade here as kind of like my base transition colour. Next, I'm going to go in with this shade here and I'm just going to pop it a little bit more into my crease. I just made my cut crease and I used the MUA Cover and Conceal one to do so and it worked really, really, really well, except it went in my eyelashes loads, but that is my own damn fault. Next, I'm going to take this kind of like berry shimmery colour here and I'm going to put it in the inner corner and outer corner of my eye. And I'm just going to blend these out so they look a little less harsh. So next, I'm going to take this gold colour here and I'm going to pop it right in the centre of my lid. There we go, so I've popped that in the centre of my lid. I'm just going to darken the outer corner with this kind of matte shade down here because I want it to add a bit more definition. So that's my eye makeup look using the All Natural Pro Eyeshadow Palette from MUA. The other thing with this palette is there's next to no fallout when you're getting it out of the pan. When you put it on your eye, it does tend to fall out a little bit, but not that much. The only issue with that is the fact that these are quite dark colours, you can see it, it's not like you can just brush it away. The shimmer shades are very, very, very creamy, whereas the matte shades are very powdery. I really like that because it's a good contrast of textures, and especially on your eye, it adds so much more definition. Really, really, really love this palette for £5. So now I'm going to do the bit that I've been looking forward to so much because I'm always on the hunt for a really good eyeliner. So this is the Eye at Define eyeliner from MUA, and I always go into super drugstores and I always try and find this, and it's never, ever, ever there. This cost me £2, and that is just so good. This is what the tip looks like. So that precision... And look what just happened. Surprise, surprise. I am pretty happy with this eyeliner. I think that is such a good eyeliner. The precision on that is so good and it glides on so easily and it dries so quickly. So next I have the Eye Define Lengthening Mascara and it's waterproof. So that's really good because it won't stop raining here. That's what it looks like. And this is the brush. I can get it off. Oh my God. <laughs> Cut it off. That is the brush, and that's one of the lengthening brushes. That is without mascara, and that is with mascara. It's not overly lengthening, but it has done it like a little bit. Overall, my opinion of this like mascara is quite neutral because unless I find like an amazing mascara, I'm not really that fussed. It's meant to be lengthening, but it didn't lengthen that much as much as I like expected. It's also kind of sticky and clumpy, and I think that's because of the waterproof aspect of it. It was only £3, so it's not going to be the world's best mascara. Now we're at my favourite bit, the bit I've been so excited for, which is the highlighter. Just look at that. That is so pretty. This highlighter was only £3, so is there going to be fallout? No! Oh my god. That gold is absolutely insane. That is amazing. I will definitely, definitely, definitely be buying that again. To be honest, I don't think it's going to be running out anytime soon because I literally rub my finger in it and my brush 
and it hasn't even made a dent. That is probably without a doubt one of the best highlighters I have ever used. So this is the MUA Luxe velvet lip liqueur and i think it's basically like a matte velvet lipstick and it cost me three pound i believe and i got the shade flare which is like a kind of like dark plum shade if i take the lid off yeah it's got like a wand oh my god it smells so good Oh my god, that colour is so pretty. I thought it would be darker to be honest, but I actually really like it. Basically kind of like a berry colour and I thought it would be like a really dark purple. The colour of this pot is kind of a bit misleading because obviously you can see here it's quite red and then here it's like really purpley. So I would have liked if it was like a dark purple because I feel like it would have gone more autumn-y, but I really like it. Overall, not a bad look. The foundation is definitely matte. The lipstick is super velvety and super smooth. Doesn't feel dry at all. The eyeshadow is just out of this world. The highlighter is popping. And the eyeliner, oh my god. And to be fair, the brows don't even look that bad now once I've got the rest of my eye makeup on. I will link every single product I used in the description below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you want to see more videos where I do a full face of one brand, then let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my face, then hit the subscribe button and turn on the little bell so you get notified for when I upload videos. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next couple of videos. Bye guys.